Hello and welcome everyone to Last Level Press. I am Mr. Black and this is Let's Play Bokida. An interesting little game that I found upon Game Jolt not terribly long ago. It was a few months ago, I'll allow. Um, and I actually tried to play this once on my old PC, but found that because this plays with a lot of physics, it just wasn't really suited for it. So I only played a little bit of it then, and having been so long, I don't recall a great deal about it, but I just refreshed myself by essentially reading its Game Jolt page yet again, and am quite excited to get back into this because it's a very elegant little game. Rain starts. Look around. There we are. I remembered that nice little seamless transition from menu to gameplay. So you move mouse to look around, and this was built by a French team of seven developers to be an interesting, minimalistic little experience. Alright, first build tool by pressing number one. Click to plop a cube on each of the two targets. Cube, cube, das cube. Aim at a cube, hold left click, and drag down your mouse to plop four cubes in a row. Four. There we go. Select the second tool by pressing two. And this even has a little bit of a background to it. Click to launch a blade. Oh, I forgot about that. Hold and release to launch a wide blade. Rotate with the mouse wheel. Cut through a cube. I think we'll try and... We'll do that lengthwise. There we go. Oh, I love that. The dynamic model manipulation. Alright, hold and release to launch a wide blade. We'll just take all of these in half. Ching! Oh, that's so much fun. Select the third tool by pressing three. Push. Click to launch a shockwave. I've got force powers! <laughs> Select the fourth tool by pressing four. Clean. Click to create a deletion sphere. This we shall do, and we'll just get rid of everything we just played with. There we go. Switch tools with tab. Very cool. Move and jump. Move forward with WASD. Jump with spacebar. Pretty industry standard. I should mention that this is built upon the Unity engine. Chapter 1, The Frog's Awakening. And implementing so much in terms of unique physics and model interactability into the Unity engine is incredibly impressive. Now as I mentioned, yes, let the shadow guide you. It will point you in the direction of the nearest dark obelisk. This game does have a bit of background. On the Game Jolt page it explains that the player is more or less traversing the surface of one of two stars, a white star, which seems to be the binary partner of that black star up in the sky, and throughout the course of the game the player's actions will lead to these two stars re-merging and then hooray! Happy endings. I don't know. <laughs> now I really enjoyed what little bit of this game I was able to play a while back, but like I said, because of performance issues, I wasn't really able to do too much of it. I'm going to try to do a little bit more for you guys now. And there we go. Each of these obelisks feature a certain little puzzle that requires solving to activate the obelisk, and I believe each one draws the black star a little closer, just like that. Oh man, I love the minimalistic art style here. It reminds me, you can now move more freely. Hold spacebar down while jumping to reach greater heights. Oh, that's right, I forgot. I've got like a super awesome double jump. Alrighty then. Can I get up onto the obelisk, maybe? Possibly? Uh, nope, not quite. This reminds me a little bit of the minimalistic color palette of Mirror's Edge. A game that featured a rather limited palette, but... It works in that it really helps to visually prioritize what's going on around you, where you need to go, how you're interacting with things, what things you can do what with. And it really, really makes for an interesting visual aesthetic. It may look like I'm just sitting here standing still talking, but no, no, I'm gradually growing closer to this as I make my way up to that obelisk in the distance. This is actually a relatively wide um, 
That's the word I'm looking for. Player world, like world space. Given that, whoa, okay, apparently I can jump much higher than I gave myself credit for. All right, uh, yump! All right, good, no, no, okay, all right. Almost didn't make that. There's no fall damage, I don't think. So I don't have a terrible amount to be worried about. All right, we're gonna get, up. Uh, yeah, there we go. And yump! I like the double jump. You can get a lot with that. So up we go. Drag up another little jumpy tower. I think I can make it to the top of that, right? Yes. Good. Yeah. And I like, for once, that this is actually a fairly ambiguous narrative. There isn't really a great deal of exposition or background. And for a game like this that's more or less an interesting blend between a platformer, a puzzle solver, and almost a sort of adventure game, it doesn't necessarily necessitate, yeah that got repetitive, oh well, a very detailed and involved narrative. You can really just take this for what it is. And what it is is an interesting little brain teaser. Especially when you get to later stages in the gameplay, which they may not even really be technically later, it's just the last things that I ran into before my performance issues just prohibited my playing further. So those may even still be <laughs> early game puzzles, which those of you who have followed me for a while know I'm not really good at. Puzzle solving just isn't really my thing, even though I can appreciate good puzzle elements in a game, even if I don't excel at them. Yes, yes, let the shadow guide you, I know. Thank you, game. You're basically telling me nicely that I'm taking too long. Okay, I think I can get up there. Ah, double jump, there we go. Oh, I forgot! There's like Stonehenge up here. Some of these environmental models just look really cool, and it leads to a certain, like, air of mystery about the game world. I mean, it makes you wonder. Plus, little things stand out, like let the shadow guide you. Literally, follow where the shadows in the world are pointing, and they will point you to the next obelisk. So it makes for a really fluid, minimalistic HUD of sorts, like the world is your HUD, to let you know where you need to go to accomplish the next objective. Now, ooh, okay, forgot about that little drop-off. Some of the- I remember having some trouble getting up to this one, and this is where the uh, ability to actually place blocks and use them to climb really came in handy, for me at least. Because... This one, like, you could do what I've done in Minecraft before to scale tall structures and essentially just place a block, get on top of it, you know, you know, hop place, hop place, hop place, and basically make a block evader. But you can also get a little bit more creative and make, like, a stairway out of them to get up that way. But I think for the sake of expedience, e e expediatry, ex you know what I'm trying to say, being quick, going quick like... I will uh, just make a black evader. Or maybe I'll test out something that I started doing right before I quit playing the last time. Let's see, I'll make a block there. Up we go. And I think if I can time this right, let's go up and place block. Nope. No, ooh, okay. All right, never mind. I don't need a block. There's a ledge here. Okay. Now what I'm going to try to do is go up and then place, place, place. Place block! Place block! Okay, well, that didn't work. I'm gonna, I'm trying to, like, place a little foothold. There we go, just like that. So that I can... Ah, no, oh, man, I made it go away on accident. Wait, no, I didn't. What the hell? I phased through it. All right, can I... Uh, no, funk. Whoops. Wow, somehow I actually managed to land on the other one. Um, hmm. All right, what am I gonna do about that? Can I, can I clean that? Can I get that out of the way? There we go. All right, good. So, let's go up. I'll try this again. There we go. Perfect. Uh, okay. Good. All right. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna widen this. That way, if I fall, I've got a somewhat larger platform to aim for. No! 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 Damn it! Oh man, it doesn't always take when I click to place a block. Up. Up. There we go. So this is. Okay. I think I reached the top. There we go. Look at how far this renders. Again, guys, this is on Unity. An engine which 
is so often under tapped for its potential. I understand with some projects like The Forest and some of the more ambitious, like slender games with some of their very detailed environments, that Unity Engine does have the potential to look very good and to do very impressive things, but so few people actually do that that it's very refreshing to see someone make such great use of this. And if I remember correctly, the studio that behind this the uh, seven French guys. I believe it's Rice Cooker Studios, something along that. Right, rice something. The link, of course, to the download page for this game will, as always, no, no, oh god, where am I? I fell. Anyway, link to the download and the page for this is, of course, going to be in the description, as always. Oh wow. Oh, I'm I'm in the cross that was in the front of this tower. Wow. That's a really cool visual. Like, I didn't think that was actually a space one could get into. Alright, can I can I jump all the way back up? Oh, cool, I can. I didn't think I could jump quite that high. Alright, so anyway, what I'm doing is I'm using my push power to knock all those free-floating pieces back into the obelisk. Is that all of them? No, there must be some more over this way. There we go. That one, and that one. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Obelisk complete. I like how, in like, Dragon Ball Z fashion, little bits of the ground start levitating up toward the sky around it. It just makes for a really, really cool visual. You can now shatter blocks with the push tool. Stand close to a block, aim for it, holding down right click for a couple of seconds, then release to see the result. Alright, let's make a little something to break. Because why not? Alright, so push tool. Right click, and bang it! Ooh, ooh, it like broke. And I know that's what they just told me it was gonna do, but it's still cool to see. Bang! I like that. Oh, that is so much fun. Plus, it's very understated, but I really like the background music of this game. It's very subtle, but it creates a certain atmosphere Oh, oh man, oh, this is gonna send my vertigo like crazy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that. No, I, I should have continued looking straight down. Looking out made it worse. Oh man, okay, alright, I'm good. Playing this with the Oculus Rift would be nuts! That would be insane. I don't know if there's any Rift compatibility for this game. I don't remember reading that there was, but... Um, with programs like Vorpex, you can sometimes force compatibility for some games that wouldn't otherwise support Rift functionality. And this one, just because of its minimalistic art style, I think would be a weird sort of, like, dreamscape to walk around in in VR. To say nothing of the fact that you would have first-person force powers, which would just be awesome. Alright, so, I need to head over here to Stonehenge and see where all the shadows are pointing. So that I can see where I need to go next. Alright, definitely that way. So we'll just continue on, and I'm going to try, I don't know how successful I'll be, but I'm going to try not to cut this too much in post. Because I want you guys to get a good candid look at what this game is about and like what pace it moves at, because it definitely has a very measured pace to it. And I like that about it. It gives you time to not just get aggravated with puzzles and uh, to get mired in what you're working on, but to instead really take in the environment and all the work that went into it. Like the fact that this has a skybox with like geometric patterns on it. And that's something that would be pretty easily overlooked if you were distracted by something going on. Yes, I know, game. <laughs> Thank you. I'm taking too long. Wait a minute. Can I can I go faster if I hit sprint? Or shift, rather? No, I'm still moving at the same pace. Oh, well. For a second, I thought that might be why the game was poking me to go faster. Okay, is anybody else getting the... Mazarinya with that little rock over there? No? Am I the only one? I guess. Shut up! music seems to be picking up a little bit. I don't know if that's meant 
to indicate anything. What the hell? I see things moving. Right there. What is that? What the hell? Oh, it's a seam between some of the environmental polygons. Is it? Or is that the shadow of that line? I don't know. I can't tell if it's properly lined up with it. I don't even know if it means anything, even if it is. Oh. Oh, this is where I left off when I first played. This gets weird. It's cool. Like, it's awesome, but this is weird. Alright. So that's definitely the last obelisk. Or at least the next obelisk. So, down we go. Okay. Oh, there goes the vertigo again. And the shadows are moving. Oh. Oh, okay, man. I, like, I feel like my ankles should just be in a million bits right now. Okay, so. I... What do you think? Should I try to Mario my way up on here? Because this actually has a little bit of platforming potential to it. So I think I'll give that a shot. And just see how far I can get. Wow, okay. That was... That was rather elegantly done, if I do say so myself. And doink! Alright. I'm just gonna spiral my way upwards. There we go. And now we'll go for that one. Up we go. Alright, this is going well, actually. Alright, now... Oops, nope, that was the push thingy. I don't want to push. I want to set a block so I can get my last little hop skip up here. Oh wait, nope, I don't need to. Never mind. Okay, so what do I do with this? It's a split obelisk, so do I need to push them together? So that they're in one piece again? Push. Mm, push! Okay, what about right-click? That's the breaky thing. I don't think that's what I need to do. Do I have to, like, cut in between them? I forget. How do I... I don't remember how to turn my thing... Like, that's... I gotta hold it down. Aha! Scrolly wheel! There we go. So if I cut right between it, does that do anything? Whoa. Whoa, what happened? I think that was the right thing to do. Yay! Alright then, it almost looked really ominous as it filled in. I don't know why. This whole thing is actually kind of ominous. I'm drawing a black star toward me. I can now glide in the air. Hold spacebar down while falling to glide. Cool. I like that there's a little bit of progression to this game in that you gain more abilities as you go. Or rather, furtherances of existing abilities. Like, I already had Advent Children physics in terms of how much damage I take. Okay, I'm holding spacebar. There we go! Wow. Like, I'm moving at a snail's pace, but... Oh, that is cool. It really allows me to just take in the scenery this way. I've got moon gravity now. Or perhaps I should say sun gravity. Seeing as I'm apparently treading upon a star. Which... Man, that's just such a cool visual. This whole game almost feels like an interactive art project. And I love that about it. So few games... Like, it's not a matter of whether or not they take themselves seriously or not, but it's whether or not they make any attempt to express themselves artistically. And by that, I mean, you know, the creator. Like, the games, obviously, don't have artistic thoughts and dreams and messages, but the creators behind them very well may. And they may be trying, not even necessarily to send messages, but to create specific aesthetics and feelings and reactions via the environment. And I don't know whether or not I'm going the right way. I don't know whether or not beyond these blocks is the edge of the map, or if it's just something I need to hop over. We'll find out. Oh, wait, no. Uh, nah, uh, nah. Okay, well, okay. I can't put blocks on those, because, like, the grid doesn't show up. Well, I don't know. I can't put it on that either. I have no idea where I am. I am getting hopelessly lost. But, that's okay. Is anybody else getting flashbacks to some of the digital environments from Metal Gear Solid 2? From, like, the VR spaces? With all these, like, hexagonal towers? 
Yeah, this is going nowhere. That's going into a corner. So you know what? I'm actually going to leave the rest of this game to you guys, because it almost feels a shame to give this entire game away in terms of what it's got to it. So I'm actually going to leave this episode here, and I encourage you guys, if you've enjoyed this video at all, to go and download the game. Like I said, it's on Game Jolt, it's free, and give it a try for yourselves, because there are some interesting moments to be had with this game, and what I mean by that is few games really tend to deliver those moments where you just want to stop and go, wow, that's really interesting, that's a breathtaking visual, that's something that I wasn't expecting to see, and yet this game delivers that pretty often. Like what I'm looking at right here, I mean, this just feels like some epic temple to some forgotten star god that apparently I wield the powers of. So, thank you all for joining me here at Last Level Press. This has been Let's Play Bokida. I am Mr. Black, and as always, I wish you all good gaming and Godspeed. Oh, oh no, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. That is, oh, oh god, oh god. <laughs>